Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. Today we're going to be taking a look at uh, what you can do with the Bob Art software plugin or package within the Bobcad Cam um, system. I am going to be taking the Bob Art uh, plugin and using it to open an image and I'm going to use that image to create a vectorized toolpath. However, uh, the focus of today's lesson is going to be really only using part of the um, Bob Art sort of brain and doing some manual work yourself. This takes a little bit more time, but it's it's good if you really need a, either a high quality finish or if you're going to be reusing uh, this toolpath that you create uh, a lot. One of the problems with um, importing uh, images, which I will just go ahead and show you right now, we're going to use this logo here, is that when you choose to vectorize the toolpath, what happens is that the software sees, actually let me open my zoom, alright I've got my zoom open here, you see the toolpath doesn't always closely follow the edges due to um, pixelation or, or sort of bit mapping. So what we're going to do is, if you, know, if you only want something um, you know, quickly you can go to the vectorize option. What I like to do is start where it doesn't work the threshold value and then scroll the threshold value up until it basically starts to come into play somewhere around there and then go ahead I'm not going to change any other settings today click OK and sure enough you know if you needed something lower resolution or you had a higher quality image to start with um, this may be fine or if you're engraving it may be fine but today I want to get this to be a little bit closer so obviously you can see the curve there is not accurate um, and if you start looking especially corners sometimes it's trying to put a radius arc in there so let's take a look at an easy way to um, to go ahead and tackle this rather than fuss with the threshold values, which you can do, um, I'm going to use a few tools. I'm going to create points, I'm going to create some lines, but the most important tools I'm going to use are the drag corner and the deform contour. But today I'm starting with this one mostly from scratch so that you can kind of learn as I learn. So you you know I may make some mistakes but uh, hopefully you'll be able to get more out of it because I'm sort of uh, going on the fly here. The first thing I notice is uh, this radius here, which is clearly not correct as contour. So I'm going to choose the Deform Contour tool. What I'm actually going to do is just drag it, and you see it snaps into a straight line. Once that's snapped into a straight line, I can choose the Drag Corner tool, select that, and move that into the corner. Same thing down here. I'll move that into the corner. I'm still on the deform, uh, excuse me, the drag corner tool, and so that basically straightened it up, and that would work fine. Another option, however, is basically to cancel that, select everything in between these two, oops, in that line, and then just simply do line, join, select that, and that, and now you create a single line segment instead of with the drag corner tool I still had different um, uh, set line segments within that. Let's go up and take a look at this. You can see same type of thing. Let's go ahead and just straighten it out. So here's an example of where once again, you can just use this tool to kind of create, I'm going to create the peak there, go around, and it's a judgment of how much time you want to spend to perfect it um, and what the precision or tolerance is. But it is important to keep um, really short line segments and turns out um, simply for the purposes of, of the quality of the G-code, especially when you're working with engravings or um, very basically very rapid changes. Um, some controllers, including Mach 3, may struggle to keep up with um, with the pace. In, in other words, you may have a few hundred lines of G code that only covers a few, um, you know, f you know, half an inch of movement or something, and that can create a um, a difficult situation 
for your mill to sort of perform at its best. So clean lines here create cleaner G code. Um, and as you can see, it's basically the same concept. I can drag the corner out, and then I need to fix that contour and that. Sometimes what I do is another sort of approach, which is just to say, um, you know, okay, I've let Bob Art do some of the heavy lifting on creating the output patterns, but you know what? I'm going to just cancel the drag corner feature, and I'm basically just going to start deleting basically anything which isn't an endpoint. And what this will let me do, and, and you know, another thing you can do before you delete too many lines, is you can start creating points, I believe, you can create points on the entity with the point on entity tool, scroll in, or excuse me, zoom in, and then just create a point, oops, excuse me, I meant to say, um, I meant to say point, uh, end. And this will create points on the end of each one of these. Um, and then what you would do is delete everything in between and then go to line join, select your two points, and there you have it. Now you might be saying to yourself, well if I'm just creating points at the ends here, why do I even need the Bob Art software package? And uh, you do still need it because Bob Art allows you to import the logo and place it in the background. What you would do is probably just skip the vectorize option here and you literally could just you know forget about the fact that I've got those blue lines there and you could just go points sketch. If you really wanted to spend the time to make this perfect you could then start measuring out the XY coordinates and make sure for instance the point directly above it had the same XX coordinates and, and an incremental Y distance which was the same say between these two uh, points and these two points. Here's a uh, character, obviously R, which I created by printing out uh, this is Helgoetica font and then scanning it and the idea here is to show you what do you do when you've got something which is you know lower resolution and you've got a significant amount of ripples here. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and vectorize once again sort of start where you don't see the image and work up until it's there. This is a little tougher because it is a low quality um, uh, sort of scan and actually I changed my toolpath to red so you, we can see things better. It actually looks like it's uh, did a pretty good job with this circle or the inside uh, of the R here. But one thing I wanted to show you wasn't just another uh, Bobcad tool which you can use. Let's say it didn't do a very good job with the inside of the R and what you can do is create three points. So we'll do point sketch. We'll create one there, create one there, and we'll create one here. And then we'll do arcs, three entities, select, 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 and there you have it. You have a uh, you know, geometrically correct arc, which if you actually look doesn't quite match the, uh, quite perfectly match the curvature of the inside of the R here, um, but pretty good. So actually let's try something. Let's go and break divide this arc into two, and then let's go ahead and drag, deform the contour. And if you look, what you can do is you can actually move that around a little. Now let's see, that doesn't give me quite enough precision, so let's go ahead and break um, this top one into half yet again, and then go back to deform contour. Let's see if we can flatten this out. We can flatten that out. It's a little tricky though. You have to play around with it to see what sort of works for you, but the idea here is that you can create a framework or you know, a starting point using the Bob Art software and then using various point line tools and the drag contour and excuse me, drag corner and deform contour, you can really create an incredibly accurate uh uh you know vectorized toolpath without uh you know any more skill than you just saw. Hope you enjoyed folks. Thanks.